have you ever found yourself in a position where maybe you own a lot of really nice knives, but you always end up carrying a budget knife? How's it going, everybody? I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny. And if you could head on down to the comment section and let me know, have you run into this? You have hundreds of dollars sitting there on your desk and you're carrying something budget friendly. Today, we're talking about this. This is the Petrified Fish Victor, a knife that, if you didn't know, I absolutely adore, and I've had it now for over a month. And while it's definitely not the most expensive knife in my collection, it has been getting the most carry. And today, I think it's finally time that I share with you why. If you couldn't guess, it's another episode of Grail or Garbage, the series where I systematically and categorically rank and review knives to give you that context that you need to understand if it's a knife that deserves a spot in your pocket. Here's how it works. Grail or Garbage consists of five categories. Those categories are materials, ergonomics, fidget factor, the lock, and then finally, fit and finish. And throughout all of that, each category is worth a max of 10 points. By the time we're done, we'll add up all the points and put it on our leaderboard. And by that time, you will finally know, is the Petrified Fish Victor just another budget knife? Or is it something else? Let's find out. All right, guys, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I have been extremely pumped about this knife. It's been the most heavily carried knife in the last 30 days since I obtained it. Uh, since I bought this, I have carried this knife more frequently than any other knife uh, that I currently own. And before you go and say, well, you should just save up for, you know, an, a nicer knife, a more expensive knife. I have plenty of nicer, more expensive knives. It's not like I just buy just budget knives. I do, however, try to get as many knives in as many different price ranges as possible because some people stay in the budget world and, and that's what they like. Uh, some people like stuff that's more premium, but something we all have in common is, is that we all like knives. So I try to review as much as possible. With that out of the way, I wanna go ahead and jump in head first into this knife. So let's talk about it. Uh, the first category is materials. What's it made out of and what does it cost? Well, this costs $45. It's sub $50. And what you're looking at here is a reversible stamped steel pocket clip. That's right. It is reversible. It has these really beautiful blue denim micarta scales. Now these have you can tell I've carried this because this is not how it looked brand new. If you don't believe me, feel free to go and check out uh, my first review of this knife, which is a standard review. Um, these scales have been getting some patina because I've been carrying this and handling this a lot. So, uh, micarta blue denim micarta handle scales, uh, matching blue denim micarta backspacer, which goes up a very decent way. It's got K110 on the blade steel and a material that we need to mention specifically in this price range. It's running on ceramic bearings. That's right, ceramic bearings, which um, yeah, they're really, really good at this price point. So for 45 bucks, these are all very good materials. For this price point, $45, everything that I just mentioned is going to be getting an eight out of 10 for materials. The next category is ergonomics. How does it feel in the hand? Is it comfortable? Can you reverse up your grip? Are there any hot spots? Um, you know, how, what about the jimping? You guys know that I'm big on jimping. We'll start there. Yes, it has some jimping on the blade. It's not a whole lot. That is actually what I would consider to be a cursory amount, but it's enough. Uh, now, as far as a choke up point, it doesn't really have a finger cut out, but it does have a spot where you can trigger pull it and that lines up perfectly between your index finger and your thumb. So that is adequate and comfortable. 
Furthermore, let's talk about the shape of the handle scales and the liner. So it's a shadow box steel liner and check this out. Instead of just giving us regular finger cutouts, they actually did this little bit of stepping action. So when you put your index finger there, it curls around perfectly, fits in that spot perfectly. And then it jumps down to this next slight stepped cutting and that fits the next two fingers perfectly. And then if you look here, there is an ever so slight extra cutout for your pinky finger. And yeah, there you go. Full four finger grip, no problem, extra space. And in case you have the behemoth massive hands and you need it, you do have a hole uh, for a lanyard. Uh, next up, we got to talk about this backspacer. This backspacer, which is matching my car to backspacer, is slightly raised, and there is actually a little bit of jimping there. Now, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of jimping on the back and underside of handle scales in general because generally it's steel and that's not comfortable to my bare naked hands. Because this is my carta, however, that is not the case. It keeps your palm of your hand from falling in between those handle scales, which could pinch uh, depending upon the thickness of your palm. But in this case, it does not. And it locks you in. You are locked in on this grip. It tells your hands, hey, you know what? This is where you should put your fingers and you don't argue with it because it's perfect. Okay. The way that they have contoured these handle scales fits my hands perfectly. Furthermore, you could do a reverse grip and that works just as well. Um, and the last point I want to make when talking about the ergonomics on these handle scales is we have to talk about just how good this micarta is. Okay. Now I've handled plenty of knives that have micarta. Not all micarta is equal. These are some of the best, if not the best micarta handle scales that I've ever encountered. And maybe there is better micarta out there. Maybe there isn't, but I'm telling you, it feels really good. It's smooth, but it's also grippy and it just feels super good in the hands. Now I am considering doing some forced patina with some mineral oil on these handle scales to kind of get them to get to the same color and to stay that same color. So they probably look more like this backspacer. Um, but just the, the overall feel of those micarta handle scales is perfect. This is perfect. It is actually pretty close to hand meltingly good. And yes, that is my opinion, but it's my channel. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. The ergonomics on here are phenomenal, okay? The ergos on here are better than uh, most, if not all of the knives that I have that cost way more than this. And that contributes to one of the reasons why this knife has been getting carried the most. All right. Now, if you're still with me, I'm going to go ahead and rank this a nine out of 10 for ergonomics. I said it, I'm not taking it back. Uh, let's talk about the fidget factor. Fidget factor is more, more than just about the deployment options. It also has to do with how good is the detent? Uh, how good, how easy is it to actuate? What's the balance like? Uh, things that do make a difference overall in the knife other than just being fidgety for the sake of being fidgety. Well, let's talk about it. The detent on here is really good. It's not super hard, but it's also not super soft. Uh, the detent is, is it, well, it's good. And you can tell because uh, it's hard to fail this flipper. I can press this as lightly as possible and it still wants to fly out. No problem. It makes a nice thwacking sound when it opens and the balance is really good as well. I find myself doing this throughout the day while I'm working from home. And yes, I do work from home uh, most of the time. And so w without even thinking about it, the balance is perfect. It's right here, right before that flipper tab and it feels good in the hand. And it, you know, of course, with the ergonomics, it makes you want to pick it up more, which makes you want to fidget with it more. And it's something that I really, really enjoy. Now, my favorite way to deploy a knife is through a spidey flick or reverse flick. And if you're right handed, the good news is, is that you can do that because that inset fuller is perfect. A little bit of a bummer for you who are left handed, that inset fuller is not on both sides. So this one turns into a bit of a thumb flicker, which is fine. And of course, you can still use the flipper tab. But I will say this. 
the pocket clip being ambidextrous means to me that this fuller should have also been ambidextrous. Now, most people are not left-handed, statistically speaking, but it is still a bummer for those who are, who also like to reverse flick knives. I get what they were going for with this clean aesthetic here on the show side of the blade, um, but I still think that it would have looked just as good had that fuller been on both sides, had that inset deployment hole been on both sides, that would have just been perfect. So, uh, it's extremely fidgety, extremely fidgety. Uh, the, the, everything about this knife just screams flick me and you want to do it incessantly and it, it feels good. It sounds good and it is fun to play with. This is going to be getting an eight out of 10 for fidget factor. Uh, next up, we have to talk about the locking mechanism because that's a very important part, and it is a, a liner lock. It, the liners are shadow boxed, and this liner lock is a liner lock. I'm, I'm going to say that. like, Liner locks are nothing to write home about, but they can be done really well. Uh, and this one was. There is no blade play on this one up, down, left, or right. It is locked in solid. When the knife is closed, you'll see that it is bang on center, no issues with the centering. And access to that liner lock itself is nice because they chamfered out that liner. There is plenty of access and it's comfortable to actuate. And trust me when I say, like I fidget with this thing so much, I hit that, that liner all the time to open and close. It annoys the crap out of people, but it's my knife, it's my life, leave me alone. Um, it's very good. I would say that the lockup on that is somewhere in the realm of about 28%. It's not quite 30, but it's definitely more than 25, and it feels good. I haven't had any issues with the liner lock. It being very solid and easy and comfortable to access is also a plus. Um, I don't know if I've ever given a liner lock this high of a score, but it's going to be getting an eight out of 10 for the lock. And finally, what has been one of my most favorite topics to talk about, we have to talk about the fit and finish. And it's more than just about how well it was manufactured. It's also about how well executed is the design language. I think that this was meant to be a knife that people could feel good about using every day and also hit certain marks for knife enthusiasts. And I think it did that really well. I love this clip point Bowie style blade shape. It looks great. It gets nice and thin behind that edge. And so it is very, very slicey, especially if you do what I did and put your own edge bevel on there. Very, very happy with that. Uh, one of the things that I wasn't a huge fan of is this chrome pocket clip. There is nothing wrong with the shape or the size. It is very deep carry and it slides in and out of the pocket just fine. It's also reversible, um, but the chrome just doesn't do it for me. I would have actually liked it a lot more had that finish been more of, a, I don't know, like a matte or an anodized look or, you know, like even if they had just painted it black, I would have been happy with that. Um, but it doesn't stop the clip from working really well. This slides in and out of the pocket. And I will say this, because of that polished finish, it, is, it does not cause any wear and tear to the pockets of your jeans, which is great. It has a single-sided captive pivot. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it utilizes ceramic bearings. And so the action is super, super smooth and silky. Uh, this is not a small knife. It's also not what I would consider to be a super large knife, but maybe that's just because I carry what I would consider to be large knives and this is not it. Um, overall, it's it looks classy. It looks aggressive. It's really, really good to hang on to. But what I'm telling you is, is that this was built right. The design is extremely thoughtful for the end user. And the only gripes that I have with this knife are that I would have preferred a different finish, possibly a stone washed finish or even a brushed finish. Um, and I would have preferred that that deployment hole was actually on both sides. Um, but it's kind of weird because even though it's not, I really love the clean look of this show side of this blade. It looks great. There is absolutely no markings on that side of the blade. Uh, there is on this side, it says it has the V for Victor and it says K110. Um, that's it. 
And of course, the single sided pivot with the Petrified Fish logo. Petrified Fish is such an underrated company. They are doing phenomenal work, and this knife is, well, it's just excellent. Um, which is why I'm going to be giving it an 8 out of 10 for fit and finish. Now, if we add up all of the scores, for materials we gave it an 8, ergonomics was a 9, fidget factor was an 8, the lock was an 8, and fit and finish was an 8. Add up those scores, and fellas, we've got a 41 out of 50. This is a grail. This is a $45 grail, and I'm unapologetic about saying that because I think that anybody that puts this in their hand, I would challenge anybody to say that this isn't a wonderful knife to hold, to use, to maintain. Everything is just right on it. The nitpicks that I have, I can live with. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, boohoo, you know what to do. And if you watched this far and you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe. I'm Roll Shambo. I'll catch you on the flip side.